Well, down two sets to one, Rafael Nadal running, sprinting off his chair to serve to start out the fourth set. Merci. And this French crowd watching something unfold that has never happened potentially here at the French Open, and that is Nadal losing. Nadal has never lost a five-set match on clay. And in his winning record here in Paris, he's never been down two sets to one. Use more of those free points on his first serve. Well, it's a good start. Well, if this is new ground for Nadal, it's also new ground for Robin Soderling. The Swede trying to play through the quarterfinals. The French Open for the first time. The Swede on a six-match winning streak. Three of those singles wins coming at the World Team Cup in Dusseldorf last week. So he's on something of a roll and making it happen on a surface really that's unfamiliar to him. I don't believe so. Something Kenza. happened with Nadal there. But what a great shot he had to hit to draw the air here. Again, didn't go for the winner, just got the ball down. Soderling's feet, but Soderling continues to bomb away. But you feel like he's it's safe, you know? He's not like going for too much. He's playing within himself. Time after time after time. This backhand's been going in. It's almost surprising when he does miss one. He's been machine-like in his precision. But you're right, the high ball that Nadal produces affords him the ability to play fairly consistently flat because the ball is up high. He's hitting down into the court. Cut. 
Slight opening here for Nadal. 15-30, second serve. Can't count. Spin backhand pays off. Nadal has a break in the fourth yeah, set. Man, uh, well, this is what I expected in the third set for Nadal to get up and break early, either the first or second time Soderling served, to take advantage of that emotional lift that winning the second set gave him, and hopefully some flatness from Soderling didn't happen. Soderling ends up holding, breaks Nadal later in the third set, wins. Now in the fourth set, this happened. Just a couple loose points from Soderling. And quickly, Nadal gets on top. Only the second time he's broken serve. Great hitting from Soderling. Getting on the offense immediately with the return of serve, getting Zero Rafa counts. on the run. And this is unfamiliar territory for Rafa, having to defend all the time, not having enough time, but most of all unfamiliar territory because he's never been down two sets to one in a clay court three out of five set match ever. He's had two five setters, those were both in finals in Rome two years ago and three years ago against Korea and Federer respectively, but he was always up. He was up two sets to one, and one in five sets. This is the only five setters he's ever played on clay. Well, suddenly this break of serve not looking so secure. He's been down left 30 repeatedly, but has been able to get back out of trouble most of the time. And Soderling's only had five break points for the match, but four of those he broke, four out of five opportunities that he's had he's broken serve so Rafa if he would like to do something better it would be save his break points he's not been able to save only one the whole match been the pattern, hasn't it? Sodling eventually getting the short ball. It takes quite a bit to find it, but he does get it, and he has been doing it consistently. Well, now a big count. hole for Rafa. Love 40 down. Like I said, he's only saved one break point the whole match. He needs to save three in a row here to get back to deuce. So, you know what they say, it's not a break until you solidify it with your, with your serve. It's a really great opportunity to get back into the set. break back. Nadal unable to build on the two love lead. He will back on serve in the fourth. Back in Paris on a special edition of French Open tonight presented by Lacoste here on Tennis Channel. It has been an extraordinary day here at Roland Garros and now we return for more of the round of 16 match between the four time defending champion Rafael Nadal and Robin Soderling of Sweden. Rafael Nadal had uh, not dropped a set this year. He didn't drop a set last year in winning the title. Now he's down two sets to one to Robin Soderling. 
And the Swede has just broken back. Now he's trying to get even at uh, two games all here in the fourth. Not been a happy camper since he played Madrid. I think he played one tournament too many, and Djokovic, I think he played one tournament too many as well. Just too many matches, too much stress, having to do all the appearances that you have to do and play matches at the same time. It's taken its toll. Yeah, that long semi final against Djokovic, over four hours long. I think it was the longest three set match in the history of the ATP. I mean, that took something out of Nadal because he lost the final to Federer, and as you say, all on the eve of the French Open. Novak didn't look good yesterday, and now Rafa obviously is struggling. He's not his normal self on this stuff. I don't care how well Soderling okay. is playing. Nadal is also allowing this to happen. Obviously, I mean, he beat Soderling 0-1 a couple weeks ago, so... A lot of things have changed. And Nadal's record of consecutive sets won at Roland Garros. That was stopped in the opening set. Now his 31 match win streak at Roland Garros is at stake. Roger Federer likes to be challenged, Falta. but you will have to think that he would be quite not so disappointed should <laughs> Rafa lose before the finals. He has not been able to solve that puzzle on clay. Yeah, and he had struggled against Djokovic as well, and yeah, the number four seed is gone. Shot that forehand, he just unloads it. So you see young Tyriak looking on from his usual seat. It's a flat take back, it's very short and compact. He's got that nice, strong grip so you can get on top of it at a high level, shoulder height, and smacks it. It's been a very safe shot for him today. Just wide, 132 mile an hour miss out wide. That is a bomb. Interesting that they showed Jan Tyriak in the back there. He was uh, really the man behind the Madrid event. And I don't know if you saw the blue clay court that he was wanting the tournament to eventually utilize over the next few years. I have not seen blue clay. Yeah, and Nadal was particularly unhappy with that idea. I mean, there was a lot of things about the Madrid event that he didn't like, but some of the things Tyriac were, was proposing, he wasn't happy with. Well, Tyriac is the ultimate promoter. He'll try to do just about anything to try to get some attention, but I think that's taking it a bit too far. I would not want to be playing on blue clay. What's wrong with this color? It's beautiful. Well, he's come in behind such great stuff that when he gets to the net, he's not the greatest volleyer in the world, but look I at all the room he has to volley into. Soderling. Well, exactly. On the run here, Rafa has got to go down the line or lob. Soderling has got his nose on top of the net, so getting cross court, you're not going to get the ball by anybody going cross court. Got to go either down the line or lob. Now we've traded breaks in this fourth set. Now we stand at two games all. And I don't believe anyone who has a ticket here is missing this moment. 
is a real buzz about this stadium as what is unfolding before your very eyes. 220 kilometers an hour. That's 136, almost 137 miles an hour. That is right up there in uh, Andy Roddick's land. And they're going in, most of all. Adelmi now hitting a winner out of nowhere, going backwards. Rips it up the line. For him, this is a flat ball. Only about <laughs> yeah. 3,000 revolutions per minute instead of 3,500. And it also had a little right turn on it, brought it into the sideline. I was used to call it Hook'em Dano, <laughs> supposed to book him Dano. <laughs> Well, oh, you're a left-hander. I don't think left-handers really ever hit the ball in a straight line, do they? We don't. You know what the I'm Latin word for left? Straight, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, know, <laughs> well, you know what the Latin word for left-hander is? Sinister. Sinestra. Oh, oh, yeah, right. I know that word. It's not nice. You left-handers bedevil us right-handed players. So we'll try to do that. <laughs> Like a simple service game here for Rafa, which is what he wanted after he lost the last one. So he's been the one struggling more on his serve than Soderling, as we know. Gain some momentum from that love service game. He needs been, uh, everything he can get right now. Down channel. It has been an extraordinary day here at Roland Garros, and now we return for more of the round of 16 match between the four time defending champion Rafael Nadal and Robin Soderling of Sweden. So, Robin Soderling stepping up to serve in the sixth game here of the fourth set. Trying to keep up with the world number one. He's coming to Rafael Nadal's house and turn things around. Rafael's going to take a look at this mark. It's a long mark as he's hitting the ball a ton. And the ball was in 135 miles an hour. This guy's got a bazooka for an arm. Just no sign of abating on that pace on the serve. It's having a much easier time holding serve. And that's why Rafa is returning from so far back that even when he gets the ball back, Sutterling has got plenty of time to get set up for the next shot. And repeatedly forcing Rafa behind, way behind the baseline. A whirling dervish move there from Rafa, but no chance. Yeah, it's interesting, Martina. Jeez, Luis, 226. What is that? 140. Jeez, what a monster. Sir. Is it time for Nadal to change his tactics? I know he doesn't really do it too much. I mean, he kind of just plays harder at what he does so well. Soderling is in the zone on the serve now. I mean, Rafa's just got to get the ball back with a little more on it if he can. But as well as he's serving right now, nobody's going to break his serve at the moment. He just needs to make sure that he's hold serve and hopefully get a you know chink in the arm, or hopefully uh, Robin will miss a few first serves, maybe make an unforced error or two. Rafa needs to flatten it when he has the opportunity. He's done that sometimes, but not as often as I would like to see him do. But positionally, he should just get a little closer inside the court. Sutterling is the one who's been bossing Nadal around today. Oh, 
because even when Rafa's playing defense, you still feel like he's bossing the other person around. Yeah. Like he's still in control somehow, even when he's playing defense. But today, it's definitely been Soderling that's been in control of the points. That's better. Yeah, that first time that uh, topspin forehand got Can't deep. Zero. See, this ball is deep with a lot of top. Pushing Soderling back. Now he gets the short ball and can go for the winner. Hard to hit winners when you're 15 feet behind the baseline. It's in fact impossible. This is where Soderling is playing way above his level. There's no way that he plays tennis like this day in and day out. Roping the backhand into the corner. Three shots in a row. That one, and now again. He is zoning right now. This is a really dangerous time for Rafael Nadal. He's thinking, he's not playing that badly, mind you, but Soderling is forcing the action and making it most of the time. Only the third ace in the match for Nadal. So you know he's been just keeping the ball in play on the serve. Flatten it out a little more. Taking the right here. Normally he should Gallant get cares. more out of that shot than he did. But I guess he's confident enough to hit one more ball than he needs to. And perhaps he could start hitting a little harder serves. Get some free points off the serve. Oh, he's fired up. Yeah, pumped up, isn't it? Unreturnable serve. 4-3, Nadal. For more of the Rafael Nadal, Robin Soderling match, here are Leif Shiris and Martina Navratilova. Well, we're on serve in the fourth set. And the tension only grows here with Soderling up two sets to one. This crowd poised on perhaps one of the biggest upsets in tennis history. Well, this would be the upset of the decade for me. Even more so than Nadal beating Federer at Wimbledon last year. Soderling has no right to be in the position that he's in right now. Now, if this were an indoor yes. hard court, you would say that, yeah, Soderling has a great chance, a remarkable record indoors. Suddenly, on a clay court, on the biggest clay court stage we have, he's producing one of the all time great displays. Pressuring Nadal here, up two sets to one. They're just continuing to serve out of a mountain. He's serving huge. He's, I mean, but Rafa doesn't like to return from closer in. I mean, the guy's hitting bombs, but even when Rafa hits a good return, he's so far behind the baseline that even when it's a good return, it doesn't pay off. find some time and produce a winner. Well, that return finally got some pace on it. Got settling on the defense.
Sutterling played uh, the French Open last year. Lost in the third round to Julian Beneteau, the Frenchman. And the last two sets were 6-0, 6-1. So I think that spoke a little bit more to where his head was. He's in a much better place this year with Magnus Norman helping him out as his coach. Well, Sterling's confident. He just hit it 120 mile an hour second serve. Okay. Well, who was it who first coined the term in the zone? Was it Arthur Ashe or was it Billie Jean King? Uh, that might have been some uh, Buddhist monk. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, well, did, Sutterling's he, there. Yeah, he's there. The big serve coughs up something from the middle of the court that he can dine out on. When you're in the zone, when you go for it and you miss, you don't worry about it. You go for it again because you're still seeing the ball, you're feeling it. And you have the game plan. Everything sort of happens in slow motion. You, you clear in your head. There's no doubt. There is no second guessing yourself. You just keep going for it. You know what you have to do. And you have that belief and that confidence. Yeah. And Your mind is almost feeling. calm, isn't it? Everything's very still. I feel like you have plenty of time to hit every shot. Even when you full run, full stretch, you still feel like, oh, it's in slow motion. Cancel. And whenever you have an opponent taking on Nadal, you always have to question, can that opponent keep up? Is fatigue becoming a factor? fatigue there but we thought that earlier no, <laughs> this no. third and fourth set if anybody can out muscle people it is Rafa Nadal so he definitely would like his chances going into the fifth set but he first has to win this set right here Soderling no sign of abating yet Rafa won that point with that forehand. Sutherland thought otherwise. Made Rafa hit another shot. This awkward low ball. And with that grip, Nadal can't get up to it. No doubt about that one. 
Yeah, shot across the bow. Nadal very much alive, up 5-4. Open tonight, presented by Lacoste here on Tennis Channel. It has been an extraordinary day here at Roland Garros, and now we return for more of the round of 16 match between the four-time defending champion, Rafael Nadal, and Robin Soderling of Sweden. And the crowd really on the edge of its seat here. This has been a fascinating encounter. A loose forehand and love 15. Zero kills. And those are the errors crept into Soderling's game in the tie break in the second set. Oh, it's very slight chink in the armor. He's been making those in this third, fourth set. And big serve again. Out wide. Yes, sir. 126. That's a lot of pace for him. So many times today when he's called on the first serve, it's come to the rescue, either to build the lead or to get back on even terms. Yes, Holmes. Guys, Soto has been serving extremely well in this set. For the match, he's 63%, but in this set, he's 76. So you know he's been getting the first serves in. Rafa was able to break, but lost the break. Now he's two points from even in this match at two sets all. Misses it in the net, you feel he's overcompensating, trying to make sure it goes in with a little extra spin. But just pulling that one down into the net. Yeah, he, pull, he pulled up on that one. Great wide serve, and he's been hitting that behind Nadal's shot on the second ball quite often. The speedy ones always run to the open court. And of course, Nadal had a lot of room to recover here to try to get back in the middle of the court. And suddenly safely puts it behind him. So that ball would have given set point to Nadal, nevertheless. Now the serve deserting sort of laying a little bit in this game, but he's still up 40-30. that question five games all well, he gave Nadal a small opening couple couple unforced errors Nadal up 15 30 and then he dumps that backhand into the net when he was in the in the point should have done something more with it played it safe which is uncharacteristic for him and talk about following where you hit the ball. Look at this body position, perfect preparation. And then he's following it to where he's hitting. The momentum going right with the ball. His 30th textbook. forehand winner. So textbook. Five all. Ouch. And that's a statistic you wouldn't expect. 30 forehand winners to Soderling and 17 to Nadal. Who would have thunk that? Called a winner, but it's a forced error off the forehand again. Oh, come on, Rafa. Oh, we're supposed to be impartial, right? <laughs> we'll have to watch him play now. Just kind of, kind of get excited about Soderling in the next round. But what a great win that would be for him. That makes a career win like that telling his grandkids about this one if he wins or even if he loses yeah this is a story for the ages this is like 
only because of the history of Nadal in this tournament. Would be on a par with, but maybe even Peter Doohan so. beating Boris Becker at Wimbledon. That was. Uh, this is a bigger upset to me again because of the history. I mean, Rafael Nadal has never lost in Paris before. Yeah, or at least a Roland Garros. Well, Roland Garros on clay. <laughs> yeah, has never lost a five-set match on clay. And grass was Peter Doohan's best surface. This is Robin Serdling's worst oh, surface goodness. until today. <laughs> yeah. Now it might become his best. This ton of Nadal's looking on. It was a nice gift. Yeah, coming into this, Soderling had lost first round Monte Carlo, second round Barcelona, third round Rome, second round Madrid. Both these two lost to Federer in Madrid. Ball bounced away from him. Nadal won the second set in a tie break. If he can hang on to his serve here, he'd uh, guarantee at least a tiebreaker here in the fourth. Nadal does get to 6-5. We'll see what Soderling is made of as he'll come out and serve to try and get himself into a tiebreaker here in the fourth. At here Leif Shiras and Martina Navratilo. At least French tennis fans enjoying the afternoon here in Paris. And again, we have uh, a light cloud cover, so some of the bright sunshine from the morning has disappeared for now. And you know who I feel sorry for is the match Merci. after this, which is Sharapova and Lee Nam. It's going to be hard for them to come on this court because this court's going to be deflated after this match. Regardless of what the result is, it's going to be flat as a pancake as well as late. Soderling, Soderling struggled with his serve the last game. <laughs> That's yeah. the top so we're used to seeing. Neutralize the serve with a deep return and then hit that forehand down Kesa. the line deep. This one here. See, so Sterling has to go backwards to track that ball down because he couldn't get on top of it early. And now this point's over. That's what we're used to seeing from Rafa, but he hasn't been able to get Sterling wide enough to get that short ball. Sterling's been able to get on top of it with those, with those long see. arms and tall, strong shoulders. So that's more like the Nadal we're used to seeing. Yes. I'm not doing enough with that return. Don't be defensive immediately. Ran out of real estate. Well, he'd missed a number of first serves. Here's number nine oh, okay. for Sutterling. That one came at a good time, didn't it? 
couple chances to play a 12-point tiebreaker. Win the tiebreaker and you've beaten one of the great clay quarters of all time. And he snatched at that one. That ball set up for him nicely. Down First time he looked off balance. Magnus Norman looking on. He's been fairly impassive today. You haven't seen too much emotion oh, like Swedish. Uncle Tony. He's Swedish. Um, yeah, I think he's just concentrating on his player, make sure that he gets the eye contact every time when Robin looks up there. He just wants to give him quiet encouragement. And you said one of the all-time great play court players, Nadal? No, the best of all time play court. Better than Borg? Better than Borg. He wanted that one. So now Nadal, two points from scoring this match. Ooh, did he That's hit the close. line? That's very, very close. I think it just touched. Oh, Rafa can't believe it. He would have given him a set point. Adultage. Ooh, when he hit it, I thought he missed it. Because he's just on the outside of the court of the sideline when he hit it. Just catches. If the ball landed another two feet in, shorter, it would have been out. Oh, yeah, Whisker. Game point for six all. the shot he wanted. He enjoys that short backhand on the high part of the bounce. He's been making that one. He's missed the backhand into the net when he's pulled wide or deep in the court. But this short one, that's been money for him. So you think nerves creeping in a little bit on that one. Because you, you don't even get nervous when he hits that shot. He's been making it time and time again in this match. and suddenly have to win that point. And when it comes, he's going to hit the sideline. Amazing accuracy from Robin Sutherland. Good nerve. Sutherland. And you feel like he's going to run out of gas in the fifth set, but can Nadal get into the fifth set? Sutherland is playing unbelievable tennis. Career tennis here for him by far. So after three hours and 21 minutes, a tiebreaker to decide the fourth set. And for Soderling, should he win it, a victory that would defy all the odds makers and would certainly earn him a place in the history books. Soderling, last summer? <laughs> <laughs> last what? summer. Second set tie break. Sutherland finally made some unforced errors. Nadal got up early Merci. and won it easily. He'd like to get a few freebies here again. Well, of course, with Sutherland wins this tie break, he wins the match. So it's a different situation completely. A lot of pressure on Nadal here. He's playing against history. Backhand drive. Too much depth and flat. Not giving Nadal enough time to whip around the forehand. And that pace has been beating That's Nadal. Zero. The ball staying That's low. Sorry. He's getting through the court. As Soderling is hitting down on the ball, whereas Nadal is hitting up on the ball. Nadal didn't get around on that wall. 
2-0, Soderle. So two misses in a row, but see, he couldn't get enough away from the ball. The ball handcuffed him, hit it on the inside of the racket. And this crowd is sensing an upset. Baseline skidded off. Nadal lucky there. I thought he had a winner. And then I thought Nadal's ball was going to go long. It didn't skid it off the baseline, drawing the air. So Nadal gets the mini break back. But I feel like he's playing too passively here. So is going for it. And uh, I don't have a good feeling about this. I think he's going to make enough of him to win this match. Definitely feel like he deserves to win it the way he's been playing. Nadal came in on the to the net on that one. He hasn't been there but six times the whole match. And this time, or nine times the whole match, and he comes in on a ball that really he shouldn't have. The ball was too short. Soderling was not stretched out hitting a slice. So poor decision by Nadal at a huge time of the match. So Soderling restores that mini break advantage 3 1. You feel as if this is a must win point for Nadal. it wide didn't get up to it enough he's trying to do the right thing the ball was so short he couldn't quite get up to it he had to reach for it and missed it cross court wide what an opportunity for Soderling can he hold his nerve here four one tie break two sets to one up serving he's been winning 60 points on the serve when he gets the first serve in. It's a 5-1 lead. Soderling has it. Two points from a major upset, if not the biggest upset in the last 50 years. The guy hasn't uh, blinked, and it's, you almost feel like the tie break works in his favor because he's going to be so far ahead that the nerves won't get in the way. Because now 5-1, I mean, it's... If he wins this point, he's got five match points in a row. So even if he gets nervous, he'll still pull through. But he has not blinked. I mean, he played a bad tie break. That was the only f tough patch, a rough patch he had the whole match. Yeah, he lost six consecutive points in that second set tie break. Now a 5-1 lead, one more point on his serve. points for Robin Bo Carl Soderling. The 25th ranked Swede is about to do what no one else has ever done before and that's take out Nadal here at Roland Garros. He's got five match points coming his way. From two on his own serve, three on Nadal's serve. 
Can Nadal pull it out of the hat? It's not looking good. Time to pull it out, too. I mean, Soderling plays a perfect point here. Gets the ball deep. Six Another deux. deep one Soderling. wide. That's a hard ball from Nadal, as a matter of fact. Yes, I can put this down the line, no problem. You know Nadal's not going to miss. Soderling's going to have to earn it. So one match point saved. He's still got four more. Harris, his run of four consecutive French Opens ends. So Robinson.